Jack, do me a favor and give Paul these herbs, will you? But he's a monk. You don't like monks. Well, it turns out not all of them are bad. <laughs> Still, be careful before you trust any one of them. Well, your son already trusted me. Oh, yes. I know that the Builder is not his father, and I also know about you. It won't be long till they throw you out of Kingsbridge. Witch. Uh, there he is. Give our prior the welcome he deserves. Oh, um... You know, I am only following God's will. Prepare to raise the bell. Make the prior proud. <laughs> well, um, thank you. Go on, Jack. Don't forget about Paul's herbs. Off you go, Jack. Don't let old Paul wait. He's at the bridge. Mother, will you hold on to my slingshot? What? Why? I don't want to hurt people anymore. Jack, what did you do? Nothing. I just don't want to hurt anyone. That's all. You know, if you're capable of hurting people with a slingshot, you can also hurt them without. Keep your slingshot and be kind to whomever deserves it. That's the only way to be good. Hey boy, if you see your mother, tell her the pain's gotten worse. I think I might take her up on our offer now. Oh, oh don't you ever get as old as I am, boy. It is not natural. This is from my mother. Oh, bless her. Boy, whatever Remedia says, your mother is a saint. Oh, is that the bell? Can you see it from here? A bell without a cathedral. Your father certainly had strange ideas. <laughs> it might be. What's a bell? Excuse me. You. I remember you. You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. I thought you weren't the Builder's son. Well, I am now. I have to say, Prior Philip told me there would be a lot of sheep here. I can see he wasn't exaggerating. You know Philip too? I do. He's the reason I'm here. Is he around? He should be around somewhere. Busy man, that fellow. But don't worry. You probably won't have to look for him for long. All right. Thank you. Shall we go after them? No. Now we know where we can find them. Ha! Ho!
My bishop, William Hamley, has returned to see you. Send him in, Timothy. We have much to discuss. Next time on the Pillars of the Earth, find out what happened to me and my brother Richard after the siege of our father's castle. What will the future hold in store for Kingsbridge? The Pillars of the Earth, sowing the wind. My name is Aliena of Shiring. I'm the daughter of the Earl Bartholomew of Shiring. At least, I used to be, before my father was arrested for conspiring against the king. And a man I had once refused to marry took control of everything my family had ever owned, including ourselves. Where's the girl? She is where you put her, you fiend. <laughs> Once the king finds out. Here's the key. Now go get her, I'm starving. Lady, are you awake? William Hammond is back. He wants to see you. May I enter? You may come in, Matthew. Dear God, did he hit you? Well, I suppose he's getting more daring now that his father is about to see the king. This is taking too long. Go get them. Right. Milady, I must ask you, do not provoke him. Not yet. Not until you're properly armed. How is Richard? They treat him like a dog. I gave him a cloak so he wouldn't have to freeze through that storm. There are weapons hidden in the yard. Near the gate, look for a red piece of cloth. Get down here, and no talking. And don't cause any trouble. I just clean my sword. Well, that was quick. You certainly do know your place, don't you? Ugh. What's with your face? Your arrogance makes you ugly. Did you know that? I didn't sleep well. Were you lonely? We've all been sleeping poorly the last few weeks. Your father will be the new Earl soon. This castle will be yours. There's no need to keep the lady and her brother hostage. Matthew. It's all right. I can speak for myself. <laughs> Oi, Walter. Looks like the princess needs a servant to do her talking. Can't imagine why I ever wanted to marry that ugly boar. A real lady. 
That's what I deserve. Maybe even Empress Maud. Yes, I'll marry the Empress. But I'll keep on fucking her. As if Maud would ever marry you. Shut up! I won't. You have no say around here anymore. I am still the daughter of your Earl. You're a common whore, that's what you are. Oh, how you must enjoy your revenge. You're just getting what you deserve. <laughs> All this just because I wouldn't marry you? Shut up. Shut up! You are a sad man who knows nothing but cruelty. God shall punish you for this. <laughs> I am the cruel one. You renounced our wedding and made me the laughing stock of the entire Shire. Stop, both of you. Go outside, girl. Walk it off. All right. I shall do so gladly. Anything you need, William? Tell the bitch to get me something to eat. I'm starving. You heard him. Go! Now! I always told you your stubbornness would be your end. <sighs> Ali? You do a lot for him. Tending to his horse, watching his prisoners. What do they pay you? Why do you keep asking me that? I might be able to pay you more. Right. Tell us. How much do you want? Maybe I don't do this just for the money. <laughs> I don't believe you. What else should you gain from... from being cruel? An apprentice. Unlike you, Percy Hamley likes the way I've been raising his son. Don't act as if you've never had a heart. I see how kindly you treat his horse. You want me to let you go? Yes. Of course. It would be the proper thing to do. There is no humane reason for keeping us locked up. Can't. Why not? Because Bartholomew is still Earl. Can't have his brats running around causing a ruckus. I don't get paid to be careless. Richard, did they let you go? Have you sided with them? Don't be ridiculous. I will never succumb to these beasts. Beasts? That's a bit rude. How are you managing? I'd be managing a lot better if you gave me a sword. <laughs> did he say something funny? That boy with a sword. Look at his back. He can barely lift his own head. Teach a chicken to fight. Might as well just step on it. I'll be back soon. Don't lose hope. Yeah. You stay down here with me, do you hear? Flemish, here, girl. Don't you recognize me? Ah, oh, good girl. It must be hard to catch my scent in this rain. Good girl. <laughs> oh! It smells horrible in here. Meal! 
little worms. Disgusting. Not even worth trying. It's obvious these are inedible. These are all rotten. Oh, a dead chicken. What a horrible smell. Someone must have trapped it in here for fun. What a waste. I'm not putting my hand in there. Disgusting. Let's see. A loaf of bread. And it doesn't look as bad as everything else in here. I wonder what William would say if someone were to drop this on his plate. Quick, put it away. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, what's with the whispering? What do I give William now? Did you get what he asked for? Yes. Good. Don't waste his time then. Your food. What is this? This is all I've found. You really think you can play your silly games with me? I am still the daughter of the Earl, and by the law of the King, you are my subject. Oh my. Forget what I said about your arrogance. It actually makes you quite pretty. Huh? In the name of my father, you will die for this! Master Richard, don't! <laughs> stupid boy. Almost as stupid as his sister. I'd rape you if I could. But you're not my kind of lass. What's with her? She dead? Leave her. The king has not yet spoken. Wait till your father is an earl proper. Then you can do with her whatever you want. Damn! To hell with it. She's so ugly, no one would ever want to take her anyway. Put them with the animals until the king has decided.
Richard. Richard, wake up. It's too high. I'm chained to a post. I can't reach it. If only it was closer. Come on, I need you to wake up. It's just out of reach. Hey! Ali? Ali, my ear! How do you feel? Hot. The wound is boiling your blood. We need to get you someplace dry and cool so you can heal. Ali, they shackled us. I will die here. Calm down. You'll only make things worse. How did you free yourself before? I don't know. When they put me here, they had the shackles fitted to my ankles. But today, I somehow managed to slip through. These three weeks must have made me very determined. Yes, and very thin. What were you thinking, charging William like that? I had to protect you. Next time, think before you do something that stupid. Richard, throw me that horseshoe. It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. I'll think of something. Just give it to me. Don't give up. We will get out of here. And what then? We'll find Father. He'll know what to do. I heard them say that he's with the King in Winchester. Then that's where we'll go. You'll see. He'll make things right again. Do you think it might break like this? It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. I'll open yours next. Can you stand? I'll try. Good. Then wait here. I'll find us a way to get out of here. Let's take his horse. Yes. Good idea. But first we need the weapons Matthew hid for us. Matthew must have hidden them somewhere else. Nothing. Maybe Matthew meant the other gate. The knights weren't prepared and the peasants scattered like chicken.
Try to stay sharp. If he wakes up, shout and run as fast as you can. Do you hear? I will. Please, take us away from here. Careful! He doesn't seem to like that. Hungry. Want to eat? It's calm now. Try to mount it, Richard. But where do we go? To Winchester, of course. We need to find Father and talk to the King. They must find out what's happening here. Now climb on. It won't eat forever. The thought that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. We headed toward Winchester, the king would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. A sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, traveling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners. She smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, their hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter, and care. We followed her to the hut. It was further than she had led us to believe. There, I helped my brother off the horse and let the woman take the horse's reins. The hut was rather barren, with few furnishings. It was almost as cold as outside, and there was no sign of her husband. Richard dropped onto one of the creaky stools. The woman lit a fire, which came alive with a crackle and gave out a warming glow. I told her that we may have nothing to give her now, but if she managed to make Richard well again, we'd come back and reward her one day. She finally turned towards us again, an odd smile on her lips. Something was strange about her expression. She nodded towards the fire. There was a sound outside, but she distracted my attention by turning to Richard. She started to explain that to close a wound, one must gently press a hot piece of metal against the flesh. This will stop demons and bad smells from entering the body. 
the woman's eyes kept darting to the door, so I turned my head to see what it was she was looking for. The moment after I'd turned my head, my own knife was pointing at my face. She'd noticed the dagger in my sleeve and had yanked it out before I knew what was happening. She apologized. It's a tough world, and it's eat or be eaten. There was another noise outside. He's here, she said. I waited for the moment her eyes were on the door again. Then I dashed towards Richard, but a hand grabbed my wrist. It was too big and rough to be hers. The man threw me aside and I landed hard on the floor. My head spun. He examined us and our weapons and broke into laughter. He stepped closer to reach for Richard's sword, but his wife interrupted. We can't sell that. Everyone would know who that sword belonged to. The man grunted in agreement and turned to leave. Before she followed him, she dropped my dagger. Burn out your brother's wound with this, she said, and disappeared. We heard the whinnying of William's horse and the stomping of hooves from outside. We stood frozen until Richard told me to go and have a look. As I did, the outlaws were long on their way and our mount with them. The hut probably hadn't belonged to them in the first place, but at least it meant a roof over our heads for the night. The fire was still burning. We had no other choice but to trust the word of the outlaw. The heated dagger trembled in my hands. Do it, Ali, I can take it. Richard tried to sound brave. A horrible hissing sound and the smell of burnt flesh filled the hut when the blade touched his ear. But it seemed to work. For a few hours, I guarded the door while Richard slept. But soon, I fell asleep too. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between. But we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak, but at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare. made it. They can't harm us anymore, can they? Uh, after all, there are laws in place to protect us here, right? I think so, but we shouldn't risk finding out. Then let's go. Where are you going? To our townhouse, of course. someone here maybe it's father do you think so well they must have put him somewhere I have a bad feeling about this come now before anyone sees us here <laughs> now look at that a cripple with a sword and his beggar girl <laughs> If you're looking for some privacy, there's a bar just down the street! <laughs> childish. Father wouldn't want us to stay in a house with those people. But Ali, they were just fooling around. Right. Let's keep looking. <laughs> Good lord. What happened to your ear, lad? Did you up make a wrong turn this morning? Um... 
We were hoping we could stay for the night. We've traveled a long way, and we're exhausted. Sorry. Rooms are all gone. King's in town. Everything's teeming with nobles. Come back next week when the big fish have jumped the pond. I might find a cozy little corner for you. Ali, he was talking to me. Well, then next time, say something. Oh, fine. It's so quiet. Shouldn't the monks be preparing evening mass soon? No one's answering. It's all locked and barred. They don't want strangers walking in at night. Ali, this is pointless. There must be one kind soul in this town. What is it? Oh, uh, good evening. Um, we're sorry to disturb you, but my brother and I have been through a lot and desperately need shelter for tonight. Hmm. Please. Wait here. Are you mad? Do not let them in. They're thieves. What did I say? Oh. There's a warm corner in the back. You can have a blanket, but there will be nothing to eat. Is your wife all right with this? It doesn't matter. The Lord struck her with a troubled mind. She will accept my decision. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're a kind man. When I woke up that morning, I was alone. I hoped that Richard had risen early, maybe to go to the castle. I left to search for him right away. On our way here, we heard to stay at an inn. They made us eat peasant food. Cruel? Not a pinch of meat. Isn't there a law against that? You heard me, now move along. Get out of my way, guard. Every citizen has the right to petition the king. But the poorer sort are generally not foolish enough to exercise that right. What are you saying? You're talking to the son of the Earl of Shiring. I'm his daughter. If you don't let us pass, we'll have you locked away and make you rot in a dungeon. Like your father, you mean? What? You know where he is? Of course. And you should too, if you're who you say you are. He's in the jail right here in the castle. How do we get there? Go left before the gate and cross the yard. You'll need to talk to the jailer, though. His name is Odo, and he's got deep pockets. Deep pockets? Well, you lower sort cannot expect any favors for nothing. Better get used to it, if you want to survive. Now, clear the way. There are people who want to see the king. I could have done this on my own. Just like you could have run away on your own, without telling me anything. Shh, hush, Ali. The people are watching us. I don't think that they care. I'm sorry. I thought I could talk to the king before you woke. You did so much yesterday. I didn't want to wake you. Please, don't be cross. It's all right. You were just trying to help. Oh, don't give me that look. Sorry. Shall we go and see father now? Yes.
That old man had quite a bit of fight in him, I heard. They whipped him for days. And when it was over, he just asked for a mug of wine. Didn't beg, but asked, hurry up, I'm thirsty. Like it was some kind of feast or something. Makes you wish he was still on our side. What a shame. Did you like what you saw, mistress? Of course not. But my husband seems to be in good health. I hope it'll stay that way. I hope so too, but you know, nowadays good food is just so hard to come by. Oh, you're so kind. That'll help to keep him fed for a while, surely. Take good care of him. I'll be at the market. Will do. Good business, mistress. What are you staring at? Your ear. You should take better care of yourself. What was that all about? I don't know, but we have our own problems. So come on. Um, uh, are you the jailer? Your humble servant. What is it? We're... We're here to see our father. He is the Earl of Shiring. Is he? Look like just plain Bartholomew to me. So he's here. Look at us when we're talking to you. How much have you got? We've nothing. So don't bother asking for a bribe. Then you can't see your father. Sorry. Um, who was that woman? That'll be two pennies. What? Ah, gotcha. <laughs> That's Meg. Her husband tried to trick a fellow merchant out of his purse. Wasn't good at it. Now he's lost everything. Then where does she get all her coin? She took over his business. Works as a merchant at the market. Funny that she still cares so much for him. I wouldn't. I'll get a penny, and I'll bring it to you as soon as I can. But won't you let us see him now, just for a few moments? Get the penny first. Shouldn't be too hard. One of you must be worth something. How is he? Just tell me that, please. Is he all right? No, he's not. He's dying. Now get out of here. Are you crying? Didn't you hear what he said? Yes, but he was lying. The last time we saw Father, he was very much alive and healthy. Sometimes I wonder what is going on in that head of yours. So how are we going to get a penny? We could beg. Beggars usually ask for food or clothes. I never heard of anyone giving them money. Well, how do people get money? The king gets money from taxes, lords have rents, priests have tithes, shopkeepers have something to sell, craftsmen get wages, and peasants don't need money because they have fields. Apprentices get wages too. So do laborers. We could work. But Ali, I can't work like a common man. I'm the son of an earl. Not anymore. You heard what the jailer said. We're no better than anyone else now. Thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. Are you sure this is right? Don't patronize me, Meg. Excuse me, mistress. Oh, I've seen you before. You're gonna see someone in the jail, right? It's the only explanation why they'd let you enter the courtyard dressed like that. That wasn't very nice. What is it? Could you lend us some money? Unlikely. What for? We need to talk to our father. He's a prisoner in the castle's jail. And the jailer won't let us see him until we give him a penny. Once you get back to him, it'll be two pennies at least. What are you saying? Once Odo sees that you really want something, he'll start overcharging for it. In the end, he's just another businessman. At this rate, we'll never see father. Could you help us talk to him? Ah, uh, sorry, but no. Mm. 
Oh, uh, what were you doing at the jail? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to pry. You know, my husband is a prisoner as well. He used to run this business, but he was caught selling underweight. Now I have to travel to Flanders and tell my husband's agents that they don't need to worry. Leaving my entire business in this man's hands. A wise decision. A man whose calculations leave a lot to be desired. <clears throat> I tell you what, I'll give you enough to pay Odo if you help us count the fleeces inside. Do you know how to count? I told you my calculations are right. There are 23 sacks. Yes, we know how to count. Then go into my stall and tell me how many there are. Thank you so much. Come on, Richard. Let's do this together. One. Six. Nine. Fourteen. Fourteen. Twenty. All right, I got it. I'll tell you when you're done. How many have you got? Twenty-three. Uh, are you certain? I think so. Please, count again. What? Why? To make sure you were right the first time. Only if you do that too, Ali. I will. One, two... Nine, eleven, sixteen. I'm done. And hmm, still twenty three. Let's tell them, then. We're done. Good. So, tell me. All in all, there are 22 sacks of wool in there. Ali, are you sure? Tell me again, Aldous. How much did you pay per sack? As I said, for mixed quality such as this, it was one pound average. One pound per sack? Ah, selling wool is good business. With the coin you have here, this means... I'm right. We're one sack short. The children miscounted. It seems everyone miscounts apart from you. Here's your coin, girl. You confirmed my own calculation, so I'm giving you more than what you asked for. If you're smart, you'll find out what Odo wants more than money. Then he might not ask for so much. What would that be? Let's just say... He likes to feel like a good person every once in a while. It makes him feel less like the monster his job has made him. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And good luck in Flanders. It'll be all right. You really gave them money? I can do with my coin whatever I like, unlike you. So don't follow my example. I won't. I shouldn't go there. I once saw a man begging, asking for coin. They almost beat him to death.
He won't let us see father until we pay him. Hmm? Here. Well, that's one for you. It'll be two pence if your brother wants in as well. Are you mad? Th that's not what we agreed upon. I said one penny for you. We never mentioned your brother. I didn't expect that from you. Why not? I thought you were a decent person. Well, I... I am. But I'm also a very funny bloke. Was just fooling around with you. You can get in for free, of course. Have fun seeing your father. Just. It's still very fair. Are you both well? How have you managed? <coughs> Where have you been living? <coughs> they wouldn't tell me anything about you. It was the worst of the torture. We're fine, Father. Don't you worry. We've been living in the castle. Matthew has been taking care of us. But you, you can't live there anymore. By now, the king has probably made that dumb oaf <coughs> Percy Hamley, the Earl. <laughs> but where's Matthew? Why isn't he with you? He was killed by the Hamleys. No. But they did us no harm. <coughs> then what happened to your ear, Richard? It's nothing but a mere scratch. Father, we have to ask King Stephen to release you. No. I swore an oath to King Henry. <coughs> Princess Maud and her sons will rule. I shall not swear allegiance <coughs> to Stephen, and neither will you, even if the other parents did. <coughs> Do you hear me? Yes, Father. Stephen is not our king, not... Not mine, and not yours! Please, Father, please, calm yourself. Huh? 
father needs water. Freed. Father, this place is not well guarded while the king is away. With a few men, I believe I could break you out. Stop it, children. <coughs> I forbid you. Your Aunt Edith lives in the village of Huntley on the road <coughs> to Gloucester. You are to go there. Richard, you will be a squire to her husband, Sir Simon. You will learn the arts of knighthood. <coughs> Aliena, you will... You will be lady-in-waiting to Aunt Edith until you marry. What about you? I will die in this cell. We won't let you. You will. And before you leave, I want you both <coughs> to swear an oath. We can't leave you like this. You can, and you will. Richard, pull out your sword. your hand on the hilt, my son. Swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ and all the saints <coughs> that you will not rest until you are Earl of Shiring and Lord of all the lands I ruled. I swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ, and all the saints, that I will not rest until I am Earl of Shiring, and Lord of all the lands you ruled. Now you, Helena, <coughs> swear by Almighty God, and, and Jesus Christ, and all the saints, <coughs> that you will take care of your brother Richard, <coughs> until he has fulfilled his vow. I swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ and all the saints that I will take care of my brother Richard until he has fulfilled his vow. There. Now. You need never come to this place again. No, don't, don't say that. <coughs> you have promised to rebuild what we have lost. Today, I will confess my sins.
Percy Hamley. Bishop Waylorin. Good morning. Ali! It's them! Over there! The Hamleys! Again, thank you for your assistance in Kingsbridge, my son. We have to thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. Right, Mother? Of course. Well, don't just stand there. Walk out with me, but very calmly. We can't let them see us. Oh, children, bad me. Now we're only missing one more. Here he is. Ali! Ali! Those horrid people are about to talk to the king. We knew that they would, didn't we? Yes. Yes, we did. Father was right. They are all tied together. The Hamleys, the king, even the church. Do you think Father's priest is also in on this? Well, we'll have to find him first. Then we'll know. Do you think he'll let us watch? I don't care what he'll do with them. I just took the coins right. You'll play in hide and seek with two ch Richard, run! But Ali! Excuse me. Oh, more pilgrims? How wonderful, Brother Bernardus. Does that mean we can now depart for the Cathedral of St. Swithin? Praise be, St. Swithin will heal my foot. Oh! Pan my eyes, Brother Bernardus. Praise be. But we're not pilgrims. We are looking for a priest our father met right here at the West Gate. It was about three weeks ago. Sorry, my children. We only just arrived here. We are here to visit the shrine of St. Swithin. Surely St. Swithin will help you with your ear, my boy. Praise be! Oh! Oh! I'm so happy my foot is going to be all right. Can you see other pilgrims already, Brother Bernardus? Not yet, Brother Peter, not yet. Oh, look at that handsome young man. Ah, uh, good day, my ladies. So well spoken. And look. He even has a battle scar. <laughs> <laughs> like what you see, handsome. You can ride two of us, young lord, if you can pay. Have you seen a priest? Our father met him here at the Westgate. He owes us money. Oh, you're talking about him. That's where he got all that money. <laughs> what? He even paid for Mary's dress. He didn't want to at first. All she had to do was stroke his bald head. Where is the priest? What's his name? Don't know his name, but he's a regular at that one inn. The Boar, close by the North Gate. Smells like piss there. Shall I teach you, love? How to fuck a man, or a woman? You can make a fortune with that little mouth of yours. But in a year, you'll look like me. <laughs> This is the place, but it looks closed. Um, excuse me. We're looking for a priest who stole our money. Word is, he comes to this place regularly. A priest? Uh, I, sorry, dear children. I, I don't seem to be able to recall anyone, uh, anyone who fits that description. But that little stable boy might know. He knows everyone who comes and goes. Oh, where can we find him? When he's not working at the war, he's doing small chores around town. He's always busy, the little chap. Where's the green cap? It's adorable, I tell you. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, look at that. I knew we'd find you here. They're here. Damn, you lost them. William will not be pleased when he hears this. That's what you get when you work with halfwits. How am I supposed to move this barrel if it's twice as heavy as me? Uh, let me help. Very impressive. Thank you for that. I'm always telling them, if you want me to restock your kitchen, don't let them cram the barrels to the brim. So, what was it you wanted to know? Um, do you know a monk who frequents the boar a lot? The boar? I used to work there. The boar, the lazy mayor, and two private kitchens. You're talking about Father Ralph. Thought the women had sucked him dry, but he always comes back with more money. But he only spends it on beer and ladies. Never has a tip for me. <sighs> Where can we find him? He's a priest at St. Michael. One of them churches round here. Which one is it? It's close to the East Gate, but don't look for him inside. He likes to light around in his back alley. Oh, thank you. You've been very helpful. Pleasure. See you around. Are you Father Ralph? What if I am? Does that mean yes? I guess so. He's the only monk around. What do you want? Well, I am the son of Bartholomew, the Earl of Shiring. So? Our father gave you money for safekeeping. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Now piss off. You're about to commit a great sin. If we don't get that money, we'll starve. Start begging for arms then. You may not know it, but a lot of people live that way. So you're saying there's no money? Right. But my father said... Your father lied, then. We should talk to the sheriff. <laughs> It'll be my word against the word of a jailed traitor. And now give me some peace. I'm hungry. He's right, isn't he? We need proof that he's lying. Like what? Maybe something he recently purchased that a monk couldn't normally afford. That's smart, Ali. And then? I don't know. At least we'll be sure that he's lying, right? Keep an eye on him. I'll have a look around. It's too heavy. Maybe if we expose him, he'll give in. Are you sure? No, but you can see the guilt eating at him already. Look at him. He's just a bitter old man. He's no match for you. I can't just rob him. Then make him obey you. Be the one in charge. You're supposed to be an Earl. Act like one. Ali, I don't know how. People don't respect us anymore. It's all right. I'll take care of it. Hey. Oh, is this yours? Oh, I didn't think a poor monk could afford something like this. Hmm. 
Richard, I found it. Oh, no. He took all the money. What now? Don't pretend you didn't see, Monk. I found this under your barrel. You are a thief. That strap proves nothing. You seem very certain of this. Sheriff! Hush, you stupid brats. The sheriff is a bastard. He'll take everything for himself. But first, he'll take your hands. Sheriff or no sheriff, you won't get your money. Ali, this isn't going anywhere. Well, at least we know now that he won't call for help. Give us the money. It belonged to a traitor to the crown. By giving it to me, he paid his debt to God. We will make you pay, you monster. You wouldn't hurt a man of the church. I warn you, I have friends nearby. If you scream, I will show them your beer-soaked belt and tell them what a thieving liar you are. You wouldn't harm me. Richard, you go over there. What? Why? Make sure no one's watching. He... What? You're a devil. I'm going to cut out your eyes one by one. First, the left eye. No! Oh, oh please don't! Where's the money? Here, here, I got it on me. Where's the rest? Gone. Gone where? I spent it. Let's take what we've got and go. Uh, all right. I may come back one day, and then I'll collect what you owe us. You were wonderful, Ali. You scared him after death. Yes, well, now, come on. Father wants us to find Aunt Edith. On the road to Gloucester, my feet started to bleed. I remembered a cobbler who lived nearby in the town of Haystead who could sell us some boots. But taking the detour would cost us both money and time. The cobbler was a quiet man with little love for children. When I asked for a pair of his cheapest boots, he stared at me, trying to measure my query's worth. Then he lifted his finger and pointed at a pair that would cost us more than half of what we had. I noticed Richard staring at me as I curled my lip and politely turned down the ugly offer. Then, with my feet still bleeding, I returned to the road, aiming for a shortcut through the forest to make up for wasted time. In the afternoon, the sky darkened and the temperature dropped drastically. We considered setting up camp to allow us an opportunity to warm our worn-down feet. However, we were already running low on food and would soon need to reach our destination. In the hills, there are a lot of poor small holdings. We asked a shepherd for directions to Huntley. It's just down the road, he answered. I thanked him and gave Richard a hopeful push. <laughs> 